So to start off these um, little tutorials here, first thing you're going to have to do is make sure that you have all of your preferences right. Because if you don't have um, your preferences right, everything's going to end up really messed up and um, we, we just don't want that. So what I've opened up here is the color settings for Photoshop. Now you can see mine are set to custom. Um, there's a few different options here and we're going to go through them real fast. Uh, Let's start off first with the RGB color space. Um, you may not know what color spaces are. You may have heard of sRGB before. Um, sRGB is the best color space for web-related materials. That's because it's a very narrow uh, color space. And just a lot of people are really familiar with it. But for photographers, uh, we usually call it shitty RGB just because it's a very limited color space. It means it doesn't have uh, enough capacity to hold all the information you need for your pictures. So you pretty much never want to work in sRGB. You can save your files as sRGB at the end uh, if you want to save them for web, but otherwise you're pretty much always going to want to choose either Adobe RGB 1998 or Profoto RGB. If you don't have Profoto, uh, well that's, that's alright, you can still choose Adobe RGB 1998. This is stock with Photoshop, you should always have it. The difference is, is uh, Adobe RGB 1998 is a very large color space. It's almost identical to the color spaces of which your, uh, your printer is, which means a lot of the information that you have in your actual image will go straight to print very easily. Now it's still fairly larger than a print space, however uh, this is pretty good. The largest of all is considered Pro Photo RGB and it, it just has a bigger capacity for color. So this is my preferred working environment. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Uh, CMYK, you don't really need to worry about this unless you're doing uh, printing press stuff, so don't worry about that. Make sure your dot grain is set to 20%. Your uh, spot grain is set to 20%. Now, this next part is really important. You want to make sure that you have your color management settings correctly. You want to make sure that you have preserved embedded profiles turned on for each of these options. You also want to make sure that all of these little checkboxes are checked. And the reasons for this is because, let's say you're working in a uh, Profoto RGB color space, and then you move to another image, and you're trying to copy-paste from one image into the next. Uh, you might see that when you're doing that, one image is in sRGB and the other is in Profoto. Now, when that happens, Photoshop will prompt you and ask you what you want to do if you have all of these options checked. It'll ask you if you want to convert it or leave it in the color space it was in. Um, now the thing is you never want to change the color space of an image unless you absolutely have to. So at all costs you want to avoid it. If an image is already in sRGB you're pretty much fucked as is and we'll explain a little bit later as to why that is. As for conversion options leave them as I have them set here so Adobe Ace for the engine Relative colorimetric for the intent. Uh, make sure you have use black white composition and use dither for 8 bit channeled images. Uh, those checked. Advanced controls, desaturate monitors by 10%. You can check that. Leave blend RGB colors unchecked. Hi there, it's uh, Justin again. I just wanted to show you a quick example of what I'm speaking about when I'm talking about color spaces and the exact space. Now what this is, is um, color sync utility inside of the utilities folder in your applications folder if you're using a Mac. Um, what this utility does is it lets you view color spaces and just see exactly what I'm talking about when I'm saying that some of them are very small and some of them are very big. Right now we're looking at Adobe RGB 1998. Now this um, color space you can see is, is fairly large, uh, you can actually sort of judge it by the window size. Now, we're also going to start looking at the sRGB, um, i.e. 6, blah, 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 blah. In comparison, you can see it's a lot smaller. Just by, um, like, you can see how far the yellows go and how far the greens go. It, it really is a lot smaller. I'm going to go back to Adobe RGB. Same position, and it's that much larger. Um, this is just an example.